All right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Beautiful Monday morning. Oh, my gosh. All right, every once in a while, there'll be somebody in the news, and we all kind of poke fun at that person because they have a big, huge ego, right? Uh, I'm going to name a couple of names, and I don't mean to be insulting to any of these people, but it's just just part of what their reputation says about them. And I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying it's what people say. So people who've been told we've been told have a big, huge ego. Um, Sylvester Stallone is one of them. Donald Trump is one of them. Uh, Paul McCartney is one of them. Uh, pretty much many people in showbiz and politics, we say oh, they've got a big ego. And and if you've ever been with some of those people, and I, I have never been with any of the people I just named, but I've been with people who have big egos that are not famous. And they walk around and everything is great. This is the greatest, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. Isn't this great? Look at this place right here. It's great. Look, I'm and you know why that is? Is because they want you to know that they are they are smart enough to be in the best place in the world. I'm in the best place in the world because I know to be here. All right. And then you have other people who are sad sacks. You call them sad sacks, right? That's right. Exactly. Woe is me. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? And they'll say, well, I don't know. It's. I think it's better in Arizona. Exactly. <laughs> it's, well, it's nice. He- yeah, but the humidity is so bad. Mm-hmm, oh, my mm-hmm. gosh. So you have people that just like being unhappy. I've always said I would rather be with the egotist as much as you love to hate him. I would yeah. rather be with that person who's going to be happy than to be hanging out with somebody who's always sad all the time. So uh, let's talk about those people who are always sad. We have on the phone Mia Tomakawa. She's a spokesperson for best-selling author Ryuho Okawa, who sounds like a fun person. I've I've spoken to him one time, and uh, he's got such a rich uh, Japanese accent. It was hard to understand it, which is probably why he sends people like Mia to talk to us. Uh, he's got a new book. That's it's called right. the, Unha- That's right. the Unhappiness Syndrome, 28 <laughs> Habits of Unhappy People and How to Change Them. Mia Tomikawa, <laughs> nice to meet you on the phone. Good morning, Mia. Nice to meet you. Good morning. It's a pleasure for me to be here today and join your show. Oh, thank you. You already have us happy. Listen, listen to your voice. You've got happiness in your voice. <laughs> thank you. I'm trying. <laughs> and, where, and where are you? Where are you calling from? Oh, I'm calling from Tokyo, Japan. It's actually at uh, 10.38 p.m. <laughs> it's 10.30 at night? Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Okay. And you waited this long to talk to us? Oh, my God. That is very nice oh of you. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are you? Oh I mean, are, are you a happy person normally? Yes, I think so. I want to be happy. <laughs> my mother was always so, uh, happy. I'm fine. My mother was always oh, happy. that's great. Yeah, she was a happy person. Yeah, my, she was. And you do sound like a happy person, too, I yourself. Do, I, I don't like to be not happy. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't like to be people who... I don't like to be with people who are sad. You know, and, and when I am with people who are sad, there's two types. There's the people who kind of like to be sad. You know what I mean? I think that's who you want to talk about. And the people who are sad... You know, just for that moment, because somebody died, or you know, something bad happened, but then they get over it, and and the and those people, that second group, I can sort of help because I can be stupid and silly and make them laugh a little bit. But the other group, the people that likes to be sad, I can't help them at all. I don't know what to do. Exactly, that's what he talks about in this book. That people, uh, without knowing that they are doing so, they want to be sad when they in fact they think they want to be happy so i think this book is for these people who are um sad or feeling miserable all the time that guy that guy in north korea he wants to be sad doesn't he yeah he does yeah <laughs> yeah so he's making other people miserable and in the end i think he's gonna feel miserable about it <laughs> yeah I, I i but i think he wants to be he's one of those guys that has the unhappiness syndrome don't you think i think so i agree 
Uh, sometimes people think uh, that's the way to get attention, that they uh, make people think that they're miserable, nothing is going right for them, feel sorry for me, and then all of a sudden people will rally around them and just give them sympathy and other things, no, no matter what it is they need. And that, and that can be a, uh, a detriment because then those people don't help themselves because they expect others to be there all the time for them. Yeah, exactly. I think the ironic irony is that when we seek happiness or we when we want love from other people, we end up not getting it at all. But when we try to make other people happier or when we try to give love to other people, they will give you happiness and love you back. So I think it's a very ironic, but yeah, I think it is. it's the truth of life. Now Ryuho Okawa has um, we've had him on the, we've had him on the show I think only one time. Yes. But his books have been on the show a lot. We've had a lot of different representatives of Happy Science talking to us. Are you drinking something? What are you drinking? <laughs> No, I'm not drinking. <laughs> no, I, I thought I heard some like, ice. Do I sound like I'm drinking? Uh, well, I thought no. I, I thought I heard. <laughs> it's, it sounded like ice cubes. Are you sucking on ice cubes? Really? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I'm not drinking. I'm not having any ice cubes. <laughs> uh, do some people like make people? Are some people unhappy because of their subconscious, or because they really want others to feel sorry for them? Well, I think it's basically the same thing, but they uh, unconsciously seek unhappiness, but they think that by doing so, they can become happier. So, but I think a lot of people are not really conscious that they are actually seeking happiness. Uh, I'm sorry, seeking unhappiness, yeah, but they're yeah. doing exactly the opposite of what they want. I'm, I'm probably a lot older than you, based on, I mean, you sound really young, but... There was a show in America called Divorce Court. Do you remember that show, Divorce yes, Court? Yes, I do. It was the saddest TV show ever. You would tune in and watch these people getting divorced. It's like, holy cow, why would you watch this show? But people did watch it. They must have been looking, they must have been people who watched that show who liked unhappiness, right? That's right. Yes, I think so. Yeah, they're probably looking for an unhappiness and they feel like, by watching people become unhappier, they can be happier. So they feel like if they don't become unhappy, did they want others to be unhappy as well? So it says here, Mia, that in the book um, called The Unhappiness Syndrome, Ryuho Okawa outlines 28 habits of unhappy people. I'm just curious. Oh, oh and more importantly, how to change those habits. So I'm all ears. I want to hear about that. What are the habits and how do we change them? Because we know people like this. Exactly. I, I know people who want to be unhappy. Exactly. Yeah, he, um, I, like you said, he has 28 most common habits of thoughts. Thoughts that people have, unhappy people have. And he uh, gives pres prescriptions for these types of people who hold these kind of thoughts. And there are 28 of them, so I shouldn't probably mention every single one of them but uh, they begin with the very common ones within our thoughts for, to women for families and at work and spiritual beliefs and all kind of um, categories he talks about uh, different kinds of thoughts that we may sometimes hold that may attract unhappiness in the end do you think I think it's easier to make a man happy than a woman it just seems like we're so much easier than you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you yeah, women well, are high that maintenance. Made, that made me too. Yeah, women are difficult. I agree. But, but, I, but <laughs> I mean, if, more insecure. I think if I'm not happy, I, I'm, I'm telling you, there's a few switches you could switch, and then, then that would change everything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one well, one of the bullet points I find interesting is if I don't have the confidence of my intelligence, what might I do to change that? I think that's wonderful because sometimes people want to make others feel like they're stupid and they don't know anything. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think they, people feel this way because they see themselves in comparison to others. And they don't really see their uh, inequalities that they are born with. 
and they feel very inferior to others. But the thing is, intelligence isn't something that you can gain from others or in comparison to others. It's something that you can develop on your own. So mm -hmm. if you can make the efforts to improve your uh, intelligence, uh, you can do so without um, without comparing it to other people. So I think when people don't, those people who don't have confidence in their intelligence, probably compare their intelligence or some kind of skills with other people around them. I think. I wonder. I wonder if unhappiness is a learned thing because because let me give you why I'm let me tell you why I'm saying that or asking that I I went to a funeral I think it was for my mother my my mother died and we had the funeral and of course everybody was sad but in the funeral home were all of her grandchildren and these are little children and they're running around and they're giggling and they're playing and they have no clue that somebody we love has died but there was something about their joy and I've already told you that when my mother was alive, she was a happy person. So there was something about the joy of the children that really seemed appropriate in her as we're remembering her. And it was, um, it was a reminder that she lived to make people happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a part learned experience and it also comes from our innate desire to want to be loved or want to be happier, but we can't sometimes get it. So I think it's both, but we like as we grow up, we have so many miserable experiences of failures and mistakes that hurt us inside, and that makes us um, want to be careful and want us to protect ourselves to not getting hurt. So I think it's both the combination of our experience and our innate desire to want to be happy. Ryuho talks about destiny. Uh, he says that there are three keys to improve it and uh, then and also there are three elements that each one's destiny is determined by mm -hmm. right and uh, I think this is a very very uh, interesting uh, concept because uh, he talks about how uh, we can take control of our destiny and we can do so through um, making efforts. And people sometimes believe that uh, they have a bad fate or a uh, bad destiny, but it's actually through making efforts in this life that we can improve it. So believing that um, we can improve a destiny really helps, I think, in this world. I love make that. It better. Making an effort. I love that. Yeah, and, and, and I, I guess believing that you can somehow control your destiny at least a little bit. Do you know, when people win the lottery, they don't always get happy. Sometimes, in fact, it's the exact opposite. I, th I think people who work hard and, and, and know that the money they have is something they earned probably get more happiness from their money than people who have it gifted to them or if they want it as a prize. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's, happiness is something that we can earn, I think. And I think that's what he's saying, that by uh, making efforts and try to have the correct mindset, we can be happy no yeah. matter what happens around uh, us. Yes, I, I agree. Oh gosh, I have a story to tell you. Can I tell you a story? All right. I, oh, sure, please. I used to work at this place in New York. Uh, it's called the Nassau Coliseum. And it was a place for sporting events. And one of the events that they had there was an ice show with these professional ice skaters. And the star of the show, this was a long time ago, was Peggy Fleming. Mm -hmm. And she was sick. So the understudy got her big break and she was out on the ice. And she was smiling from ear to ear and she was out skating and she looked beautiful. And I was sitting at the far, far top of the Coliseum, very far away, and I was sitting with one of the guys I worked, and he was a guy who loved unhappiness. <laughs> and and, and I, I said to him, I said, look at that smile. You can see her smile all the way up here. And he said, you would be smiling too if you just had the break of your life. And I said to him, I think the smile came first. Mm -hmm. I think she got the job because of her smile. I don't think she got the smile because of her job. 
and, and I think that's part of what we're trying to figure out here is why some people think that an accomplishment will make you happy when it's the exact opposite. These, the happiness will make you accomplished. Yes, exactly. I think that's the main thread throughout this book that he's talking about is that by changing your mind to a positive mindset, positive things will start happening to you. Instead, so instead of just waiting for something to happen to you, just try something different or something positive so that you can bring happiness to your life. The, the interesting thing that I, I find about this whole uh, time, the book itself, what I'm reading about the book, is that it seems like he is confident that a person who loves unhappiness can actually be changed. Where I have found in my life that it's, it's better to let them live because the irony is that they, they are happy because they're unhappy. There's an mm -hmm. irony right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, there is an irony. But I think when, if you ask them, I think they'll tell you that they want to be happy. But they just don't know how, I think. So I think they feel like by seeking unhappiness, they can be yeah. happier. And they don't realize it. I that's, think. A first, that's a good first step, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, people uh, are afraid to address their fears because sometimes they go into a relationship and they're afraid of that. Sometimes they go to a new job or they start a business and they have fears about that. How can a person overcome that fear and be optimistic that this is the correct choice that they want their life to go? Right. Um, if they feel uh, very insecure, that I think the chances are that they don't really know what they really want to do in their lives. So I think he suggests in this book that you have to really seek and really think about what your heart's desire is. And then once you set your mind, I think instead of uh, looking for other uh, options or you know being unsure about your decision, you have to just keep it, keep, give it a try. And I think he says that you need to give it a try for at least for a year to see if that's really what you want to do. So I think a lot of people kind of give up before even they give it a try for a certain period of time. You know, they think about something and they do it for a while, but after a while they kind of give up. So I think that's the kind of a suggestion he has. And by really working on it, I think you can start erasing or getting rid of uh, the fear against the unknown. Wow, that's pretty profound. Uh, Mia to Tomakawa is on the phone in Tokyo at 10.30 at night. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. <laughs> and and uh, and she's not drinking anything. It sounds like she is, but she's not. <laughs> <laughs> and she's, she's speaking on behalf of Ryuho Okawa. I just went to the website okawabooks.com and and, by, and uh, it says here, Ryuhu Okawa is re a renowned spiritual leader and international best-selling author with a simple goal to help people find true happiness and create a better world. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. he needs to get out more often. He's writing too many books. Yeah, <laughs> he needs to yeah. go on tour. He has written more than yeah. <laughs> he has written more than two two thousand books. Oh so. my gosh, he's, he's got really a, busy. <laughs> he's a good-looking guy. Does he have girlfriends or is he married? What's his girlfriends? Oh, he, he's married. He's married and he has five kids. Oh, okay. And so he's not. Well, married. okay. <laughs> so he's not. A, he's not typing all the time. If he's got five kids. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. He's Our, he's a really good father let me, and husband. I'm sure he's a good role model for all of us. Let me, Very much. Let me, let me go to the phone and uh, say hello to one of our listeners. Good morning. Thank you for calling and for waiting. You're on the air with Mia Tomakawa. Oh, good morning, Mia. Thank you so much for writing this book and for bringing this man, this author's wisdom forward. And Mia, can you tell that Larry and Robin are happy people? <laughs> 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 yes, they're very uh, happy. Yes. They, I'm sorry. There's a little delay because it's coming across <laughs> the ocean and a continent. Yeah. <laughs> Mia, how did you get to um, um, be exposed to this man's writings? And um, I think we all know people who, unfortunately... I, I guess we would call them kind of toxic because no matter how much you try to help them or suggest or 
or share things with them. They're just stuck in that place of unhappiness. And um, um, I love that you bring forward solutions that this man has, has shared. And I wonder if he talks about two things. Number one, the help of prayer or spirituality. And number two, um, emotional intelligence and how maybe some people, for whatever reason, brain chemistry or whatever, just are not programmed this way to be open to it. And I so appreciate hearing your comments, and I, I am definitely going to get your book. I know a lot of people are. Thank you, Mia. All right. Good questions. Um, Mia, do you want to respond to those? Sure, yeah, thank you very much. That's a very, very good question. And I think based on what he says, uh, Yu Hokawa says in this book, I think I believe that you are right, that some people seem to be programmed to um, seek unhappiness or not to develop doubt. And in order to overcome that tendency, I think he suggests that um, they repeat positive words every day. So if it's really about doubt towards spirituality or even doubts about yourself, saying to yourself, I believe in this, I believe in spirituality, I believe that I'll be happier, I believe that I'll be able to live a positive life every day, really starts um, reprogramming your mindset. And I think that's the beginning of everything because once your mindset becomes very positive and reprogrammed, you will start saying positive words and you will start making positive behavior and that will gradually attract more happiness and positive things to your life. Wow, I hope that's true. I hope that works for some people. That, I just, I, that, it's such a good... It's very optimistic. I I, I must say I that love I'm, 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 I love optimism, but I gosh, I, the people who I'm thinking of who probably I've stayed away from because they never seem to be happy. Mm -hmm. I, I hope they are finding happiness is my true wish. Um, let me squeeze in another phone call. Good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on there with me and Tom McCallum. Hey, Larry Robin. Hey, Larry Robin. Happiness is a day's work well done. Uh, oh, a day's Happiness work. is a plus sign, and you could say the plus sign could even be the cross. There you go. Ain't nobody happier than the one who believes in the cross. Thank you, Larry Robin. There you go. Mia, do you want to comment on that? It sounds like he's saying happiness is uh, doing a good day, a good day's worth of work, and um, obviously religious belief is, is the source of his happiness. Yes, I completely agree with him, and I believe that uh, religious belief is really the only, maybe, source for becoming happier, because believing in God and believing that we are uh, children of God and we have positive aspects really is the beginning. I think many unhappy people really can't believe that they are very precious beings, and they don't really see how precious or uh, their right or their responsibility to be happier so i can't agree with him anymore more i yeah. can't i i can't uh agree with him yeah. yeah i agree with him completely i'm sorry wow no i got we got what you meant you're uh, so wonderful uh, uh mia thank you for being on the air and for staying up so late uh, <laughs> the, the, the 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 book is called the unhappiness syndrome 28 habits of unhappy people and how to change them uh it is written by ruho okawa who has the name that sounds just like our city, Mia. Our city is called Ocala. Yeah. I, I yes, know. I know. That's very wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> what a coincidence. Maybe it's not a coincidence. There you go. And, I and, love that. And Mia, the website that I gave the listeners was OkawaBooks.com. That's O-K-A-W-A, -A OkawaBooks.com. Is that the best website? Yes, we have all the information about our books on the website. So please come visit our website. And it is in English. Um, how many languages are his books published in? It's right now 28. Wow. 20, nice. 28 My languages. Gosh. How many do you speak? How many languages do you speak? Oh, no, I only speak English and Japanese. Okay. That's it. <laughs> that's, only. That's one more than only. me. Only. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, that, and that's not an easy, easy one either. Uh, Mia Tamakawa, stay up uh, later. Talk to other radio people. This is a good message. We want you to get it out.
Okay. Thank you, Mia. I think she disappeared. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, there you are. There you are. Thank you, Mia. All right. Oh, we, sorry, sorry. That's okay. Thank we'll you. be right back.